Hi guys, it's Lexi here, and we are going to be continuing um, this game. Um, where we left off in the last part, basically the Bacall carving got stolen, and I was and I completely forgot that's the part, like the task that clicks for that part. So that honestly kind of really startled me. But anyways, let's continue. We knocked out half of this. We got these two. Um, um, I'm not sure if I honestly want to do this on camera or not. But, um, basically, um, you're supposed to go to, um, certain little audio things if I can which exhibit had the ham radio thing there it is it's like listen to this it's locked. It's locked. the Maya used different methods to represent numbers here is an example of the numbers from 0 to 19 from top left to bottom right Notice how some numbers are represented with bars and dots, and some are represented with pictures. Okay, so you can see that's an example of audio, and then um, if we go into the garden. In addition to adorning themselves with jewelry and costumes, the Maya shaped their bodies to heighten their beauty. Beads were dangled in front of infants' faces to encourage crossed eyes, a trait considered attractive to the Maya. In addition to adorning themselves with jewelry and costumes, the Maya shaped their bodies to heighten their beauty. Okay, so that was like an example, like a couple examples of the audio. So you just basically go around in the um, museum with the audios, and which is what I'm going to do. And... Um, when I am done, I will go to the audio thingy and we can do the audio. Okay guys, so I am back. Um, once you listen to the different audios and stuff, you're supposed to come here and enter the different thingies. So that is exactly what I'm going to do. A is five. B is 8, C is 14, D, excuse me, D is 7, E is 1, F is 6, Um, I am missing a, where is the middle row here? Is it here? Aha, uh -huh, here's G. G is nine. H is 15. I is three. J is 13. There. That looks like it's in order. Okay, and the rest will write. So that's done. Um, what can we do next? Um, So I guess let's go to the hotel and before we do the number system or anything, just to see if Sunny has any notes on his floppy disk, I guess. And maybe we can also give the girls a call. But let's go ahead and mark the... Let's check our messages though and make sure we don't have any voicemails too. Hi, 
It's Franklin Rose. I'm calling because it's just... This theft is very bad news for the museum. You can't imagine the limb we went out on to acquire that Pakal carving. It's been one of the museum's main attractions. Um, I don't want to take you away from your internship, but if you can do a little investigating, well, I think I speak for the whole board when I say we'd be very grateful. Give me a call when you have a chance. And Nancy, thanks. I guess we'll call Frank and Rose first. I guess it's a good thing I checked. So I'll call Frank and Rose, knock the thing off, and go to our uh, hotel. How may I direct your call? This is Nancy Drew. Calling for Franklin Rose, please. Just a minute, please. Nancy, hello. Do you have any news? Not really, but something tells me this case is going to get complicated. Oh, Nancy, you zero in on a case like a heat-seeking missile, don't you? I feel so much better knowing you're going to follow up on every lead. I'll help in any way I can. Thanks, Mr. Rose. That's what I'm here for. Okay. So we're on the case about that. So all we got left is the numberings of it, and then we can also start on the niece sometime, too. But let's go to the hotel and uh see if we can look at sunny's floppy disk and call the girl time is it still early anyway but let's go to the hotel because i was gonna put nancy to sleep eventually but it's the next day so it kind of doesn't make sense to kind of do it now Plus, this gives us a chance to really kind of look in our hotel room. Okay, so it's 11.45. Um. Yawn, doggo. So cute. Ah, these are notes. Oh, okay, so we kept the uh, Chocolate Canyon's number. May help me with my task, which I'm getting ready to look at now. And talk to anyone who may have been hiding at the crime at the museum. Tanrick's not there, so we gotta go talk to Taylor on or Alejandro. And apparently we need to analyze the handprint too. Be sure to check in yep, which I'm getting ready to do too. So let's go ahead and put this in here. I need a disc. I need a disc. Oh, there it is. Okay. There we go. Oh, shoot. What's his password? Oh my gosh. Oh, wait a minute. He's got Coco Kringles. Is it Coco Kringle? Did I spell it wrong? It's hard to see because the thing is white. I guess I gotta space it, okay. Let me try it one more time. There we go. Third time's a charm. Okay, stuff to do. Narrations. <laughs> yep. <laughs> stuff to forget. Temple closets. Came up with a great question for <clears throat> level three, but Henry Hake said, let's like get some time on making but for this, just don't know where I can get my hands on one. I wonder if Joanna will spring a trip for me to go down to Guatemala. Okay, stuff to remember. 
God's bars and God's Maya number system. Zero looks like a turtle shell and no dot. One dot equals one, two dots is two, etc. One bar is five, so two bars equals two times five or ten. Okay, so this is the last task thing that we have to do. Okay, so this is the information page that we need. Stuff to work on. Don't I play or UFO? Oh, Sunny. Let's talk to the girls. considered one of the great Maya rulers. He reigned at the height of the Maya civilization. So what happened? Well, apparently the civilization was never quite the same after he died. No silly with the theft. What happened with the theft? Who are your suspects? Do you have any clues? Easy, ladies. Let's just say that so far, I have more questions than I do answers. But don't worry, I'm on the case. There goes your low-key internship. Yeah, oh, really. You'll be surprised. I don't know what to make of Alejandro Del Rio, the attaché to the Mexican consulate. What's his connection to Beach Hill? Right now, he's negotiating the monolith loan agreement between Mexico and the museum. And what's your confusion? Something to do with dashing good looks, I hope. Well, he is a little bit handsome, but he also seems very angry about all the Mexican antiquities his country has lost over the years. How have they been lost? They've been taken by explorers and archaeologists and smugglers. I guess the laws have only recently changed to protect Mexico's rights to its own antiquities. Well, it sounds like he has a legitimate gripe. Yes, but I got the feeling he would do just about anything to get an artifact returned to Mexico. What do you mean, anything? That's what I'm not sure of. Well, let's hope he's just a big talker and not a bona fide vigilante. Mm-hmm. Have you seen anything in the papers about Beach Hill getting a deal with Mexico to display the Palenque monolith? The who? The monolith. It's a giant block of stone recently excavated from a cave near Palenque in Mexico. Apparently it's a very big deal. They think it's 1,500 years old. So, have you seen it? This, uh, monolith? Yeah, it's humongous. Must weigh a ton. Like how big? A refrigerator? Maybe Bigfoot's refrigerator. Sorry, Nancy, but how would a person tell this monolith apart from, say, some other big rock? Well, for one thing, it has Maya glyphs carved into it. Glyphs? Pictures that represent words or ideas, also known as logographs. Joanna says the glyphs might be a message from King Pakal. What kind of message? We don't know yet. Henrik Vanderhuhn, Beach Hill's epigrapher, is working on a translation. Okay. Ever since the theft, I haven't been able to find Henrik anywhere. That's odd. Has anyone else seen him? If they have, they sure aren't telling me. Nancy, do you think he's the thief? I can't imagine that. Maybe he's just an accomplice. Maybe he loses security somehow to make the thief's job easier. It's possible, but Henrik seems to care so much about his work. Why would he want to hurt the museum? Maybe he cares a little too much. She's right, Nancy. I'd give him the third degree if I were you. Whenever he shows up again, that is. 
Somehow, Joanna has gotten the museum into some financial hot water. How'd she do that? Yeah, and how hot's the water? It's all very vague. I want to give her the benefit of the doubt. I mean, maybe she just overextended the budget a little in her effort to acquire the best artifacts for the museum. But... But even if her intentions were good... She may be feeling a little desperate to make some money back quickly. Desperate enough to steal the Pakal carving, sell it on the black market, and collect the insurance on it too? I know she loves the museum. Who knows what she'd do if she were afraid of losing her job. She's a suspect. Definitely a suspect. Mm-hmm. I'll talk to you later, ladies. Bye. See ya. Okay. So with that time of it. Um. Hmm. I guess let's go analyze the thing at the museum, I guess. And also try to take care of that last task, at least. So let's go ahead and take care of this. Because I have the solution. I think. Right? Yay, did it. Okay. Okay, so I guess we can go mark the thingy off the map and, um, see if, nope, Hendrick's still not in here, okay. Let's see if we can... Uh, wait a minute. I think maybe we might have to go to talk to Joanna. Let's try to go see if Joanna's here and ask her if we can use the, um... If we can analyze this print. Come in. Need something? Have you seen Henrik? I found a piece of paper inside the Pakal display case. It had some glyphs on it and a print of a red hand. I'm hoping he can give me a translation. What am I, fish food? Henrik's not the only one around here who can read a glyph, you know. Sorry. Sorry, Joanna. I thought I was supposed to go to Henrik with all my glyph questions. The police showed me the note. It said, the magician suffers yellow death, whatever that means. Apparently, the thief just couldn't come up with the glyphs for the curator suffers flaming purple disgrace. I'm curious about the red handprint the thief left. Does it have any significance in Maya culture? Afraid I can't help you there. What I want to know is what the hand was printed with. It's obviously not finger paint. Why don't you do a little analysis on it in the lab? 
I haven't seen Henrik since the theft. Where do you think he could be? Who knows? Okay. I guess I'm so triggered or then maybe we can go um check it out now. Okay, I've got a graph of the chemical used for the handprint. Now I've got to match it up with a known substance. Okay. That's it. H G S. Okay. So let's go look on the periodic table. According to this chart, HG stands for mercury. AU is gold and silver. S stands for sulfur. So the handprint was made from mercury and sulfur. Yep, yep. Okay. Um, should we go tell Joanna then? Maybe? important carvings to add definition to the artist's lines. Where would a person get a supply of cinnabar? We use cinnabar here at the museum the same way the Maya did, to keep things as authentic as possible. Henrik orders those kinds of supplies, but we've been out of stock for quite a while. The last I heard, there was some kind of holdup with the distributor. Okay. Work to do. See you around. Um, I would say maybe we can try to go talk to Sinclair and thing, but it is getting towards the end of the thing. Um, one thing we can do is find that number for Cinnabar and call that company and see what they say. Let's do that real quick before the end of the video. Keep it real. You have no voice mail. <laughs> um Keep it real. Max speaking. Hi, I'm the new deputy curator over at Beach Hill Museum. I wonder if you could answer a couple of questions for me about our ordering history. Well, hello there, Beach Hill. Hey, you're not Sunny June. Whatever happened to that guy? I suppose he caught a ride on a flying saucer, eh? <laughs> what a riot. Uh, I'm sorry. Anyway, you don't need to reorder, do you? Unless you ate last week's shipment for breakfast, that is. Last week? Do you know who placed that order? Well, the initials on the order are... JR. Joanna? Really? Okay. You're sure it was last week? Oh, that's what it says here. Well. Was the package shipped to the museum? Uh. Oh. Oops, I guess we didn't ship it at all. It looks like the package was picked up here at the warehouse. Really? So there hasn't been a holdup at the distributor or anything like that? Holdup? Oh, I don't know where you're. <laughs> My bad about that, you guys. I am so sorry. I'm trying to grab something and my camera fell at the exact same time. My bad. But that's what he basically 
says. Can you remember anything about the person who picked up the package? Mm, I sure can't. Guess I must have been at lunch or something. Well, thanks for your help. Sure thing. I hope there wasn't any problem with the stuff, was there? We only used a top grade mechanic sulfide. Judging by the impression it left, I'd have to agree that the quality was fine. Well, you sound a little green in the chemicals department, if you don't mind my saying so. I hope you know that mercuric sulfide is highly toxic. Makes you crazy. Okay, it's toxic. Well, I have heard that mercury poisoning can cause hallucinations and other symptoms of psychosis. Oh, ah. Uh uh, looks like I've got another call coming in here. You give us a call in about four months or so when you start to run out, okie doke? And don't forget to keep it real. Okay, you guys, that's going to wrap it up for this video. Thank you for tuning in, and we'll continue. It, it is definitely getting interesting. Stay tuned.